This is Carmen and Darius Britt here with Wealth Nation, and today we want to talk to you about banks. Yes, we have so much information that we want to share with you, so we're going to compile it all into this first few minutes that we have. Mm -hmm. So just to start off, banks or the banking industry, what is, what is it? Is It's a place for us to store our money, mm -hmm. and the banks offer us products and services, they give us credit, all these things. So the banks offer us checkings accounts, savings accounts, and CDs, for example. And from a consumer standpoint, we think of the banks as a safe place to store our money. Now, it is a safe place to store our money. Of course. But we have to remember that the bank is a business. Yes. They're in a business of storing our money. Yeah. Or are they? Or are they? <laughs> <laughs> so the banks are in the business of moving money. So we take our money and we store it in the bank and then the bank gives it back to us in the form of loans. So we store our money in the bank, but then we save our money mm -hmm. month after month, year after year, because we want to buy a new house. Sure. So the banks, out of the goodness of their hearts, they give us a loan for our, our brand new house. Yeah. But we need to have transportation from our home to our job. Mm -hmm. So out of the goodness of their heart, again, they give us a loan for our car note. <laughs> but we still need to send our children to college, and we haven't saved up enough money in our banks, so then we have to get student loans mm -hmm. from the banks. Yeah. We also have to maintain our lifestyle, so our kids need books, uh, we need to put food in the house, or whatever we need, we need to borrow money from the bank again in the form of credit cards. Yes. Now. If we're borrowing all this money from the bank, but our deposit is only so much, so much, how does how does that actually work? <laughs> I, I don't know how it works because, or I didn't know how it worked <laughs> because I was just ignorant to what was happening because I was like, man, it's Friday, my direct deposit cleared, <laughs> it's in the bank, and it'll be there when I need it. I'm gonna start paying some bills from this electronic account. Mm -hmm. So we need to take a step back and actually figure out what's going on because like I said, I was like, woo, the money's there and it actually isn't because there's this thing called fractional banking. Mm. And so what fractional banking is, is that the banks only need a fraction of our deposits on hand. Mm -hmm. So let me break that out even further. So if you deposit $100 into the bank today, and, and these numbers that I'm talking about is per today's standards, it is constantly fluctuating. So today, you put $100 into the bank. The bank only needs to hold on to 10%. So $10 is gonna go into the teller drawer. Mm -hmm. $90, or the 90%, is going to go out into the general pool of funds that you, me, Darius, and everybody in the world has contributed to. So that pool of funds funds our lifestyles in the forms of loans. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say that your deposit really just came back to you with interest <laughs> because we all own homes, cars, credit cards, whatever the case may be. Right. So our deposit to us is a, a good thing because our money is sitting in the bank. Supposedly. Or, or supposedly. Yes. But it's a liability to the bank. Yes, it is. So because it's a liability, how do they turn it into assets? <laughs> well, they do exactly what we just said. <laughs> yeah. They hold a fraction of it on hand and then they loan the rest of it out times 10 to us in the form of our credit cards, our student loans, and our car notes. Exactly. And on top of that, they charge us a fee for even holding the money. <laughs> so that interest that they gave us is our money in the first place because we paid for it. Yeah. So how does that work? <laughs> it's very juicy. Right? <laughs> but, but it goes back to the point that you made earlier where the banks are a business. Mm -hmm. We just think of it as this empty warehouse for in a storing ground for our cash, mm -hmm. but it's not. In order for the banks to keep their doors open, they got to offer, offer us products and services. And as we've said a million times, that is the loans that come back to us. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you understand what's going on um, because I don't want you to be like me where I was just an ignorant consumer dropping my money in the cash and assuming that it was going to be there mm -hmm. because the other point of it is that the bank tells that your money is insured by the FDIC and yeah today <laughs> are you rolling your eyes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how I feel too we're passionate about this stuff so the FDIC um, today your money can be insured yeah absolutely but if there's a next crash the government isn't going to bail out the banks so where in the world is all that money going to come from us 
us. We're going to be bailing out the banks. <laughs> so go there goes that insurance of that two hundred and fifty thousand um, that you may have stored in the bank. Mm -hmm. So what we want to get you guys to understand at this point is that the banks really aren't that safe and cozy place of storing your money. And we're going to teach you on a different video where you can actually store your money properly that's in your best interest. Mm -hmm. But for today, just make sure that you understand fractional banking, what's happening to your deposits, and the power of interest. Mm -hmm. Because right now, just take your immediate family. How many of those members of your family own homes, cars, and have credit cards? and every single month they are making a check, principal and interest, back to the bank. Mm -hmm. The bank is pocketing that interest and that principal just keeps circling. Yeah, the banks are in the business of keeping us dependent on them. Ooh, yes. So that house note that they said that we can't afford, we really can't afford it. <laughs> so when we go and get our mortgage, we shouldn't get what the banks are telling us that we can afford. No. Because we really can't. We can afford to pay the monthly payments yes. for the next 30 years, but we can't afford the house. Yes. So as you go throughout your day, think about what would the bank do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are they on our side or are they on their side? Exactly. They're on their side. Yeah. They have all the money. Yeah. And as you said earlier, our deposits to the bank are a liability. Mm -hmm. But as consumers, our deposits are assets. Whose way of thinking is correct? Well, if the banks have all the money, then... It's the banks. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. So as we're, as we're building through all these videos and this content that we're sharing with you, we first started with like mindset and we're just trying to educate you so that you can start leveling up your financial game. Because the more educated you get with this financial industry, you have to have that growth mindset because mm -hmm. otherwise uh, you're really just going to continue to fall into that financial rat race and we yeah. want to pull you out of it. So by just giving you bits and pieces of information here and there, that's what we're here for. Right. So fractional banking, the power of interest, go back and look at your credit card statements, your car notes, whatever it is, and calculate the money of interest that you're paying to the bank. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, now that you're aware of it, you may be a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> you may go get a bike. No, I'm teasing you. No. <laughs> not, not that drastic. But yeah, anyways. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Please subscribe to our um, YouTube page and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at WealthNation.io. This is Darius and Carmen Britt with Wealth Nation. Own your own lifestyle or someone else will.